Hey! Hello everyone! Uh, welcome to Full Stack GraphQL Bootcamp. I'm really excited to um, create this uh, bootcamp and uh, um, yeah, it will be uh, live for next four days. Um, every day, like a couple of hours. Um, please subscribe to the channel so like all the videos will be available uh, later on. Um, Cool. Uh, let me just arrange a little bit chat here. Um, cool. Yeah, let's start. So um, a little bit about myself. My name is Vladimir Novik. This is my fancy logo. Uh, cyberpunk style ish. I am developer advocate at uh, Hasura. Uh, .io. I'm also Google Developer Expert in uh, web technologies, uh, author, consultant in uh, web, mobile, VR, AR, and IoT fields. Um, and uh, this is my Twitter. Somebody asked on um, on channel uh, what my Twitter is. So this is my Twitter handle. This is my website. So feel free to uh, ping me on Twitter. Uh, and uh, yeah, so um, what I want to talk to you about before like even starting with what is GraphQL and like in general, I want to talk about network, right? So how, actually like how uh, we fetch data. Because uh, all of these bootcamp will be all about fetching data with uh, GraphQL, which is uh, a little bit different that you are uh, probably used to. <coughs> So um, currently, with mo most of the apps use RESTful API, which is probably you're familiar with. Um, the core idea is to have a URL for every resource. It sounds uh, cool, it sounds scalable. Well, it's not really, we all know there are lots of problems with REST. So um, first of all, description of resource is really coupled to implementation of this resource. Um, also, we have like overfetching, we have underfetching, and um, we will see in a bit like what, what do I mean by the saying like overfetching and underfetching. Um, and um, chaining requests to server, it's like we do it all the time, and uh, sometimes we uh, like. For example, front-end developer has uh, need, need to change API and back-end developer also need to change API endpoint or introduce new API endpoint. And then there is a versioning and um, it's just like nightmare that, that won't end. So um, let's see actually, this bootcamp is really, really hands-on. So these slides are uh, available through the, uh, through the repo, uh, Tyler send you an email. But uh, in general, these slides are just like six slides with the agenda and that's it. Most of this uh, bootcamp will be um, hands-on. You will have homework, you will have assignments. We will do these assignments on, on a daily basis. So for example, today you will have homework. We will solve it tomorrow um, um, at the beginning of, uh, of the bootcamp. So um, yeah, let's check um, what is just regular REST, uh, RESTful API. We have uh, Star Wars API, which is pretty common API for uh, like dummy data, not like, actually not dummy data, but the data from uh, Star Wars uh, universe. And we have a bunch of requests, we can request um, uh, let's say people with uh, with ID. We we can request star sheets. We can request lots of things, right? So um, let's say uh, we want to request I don't know uh, films. I think uh, yeah. So we have a new hope, and we have. Uh, characters and each one of them is another API endpoint and planets and another API point. So basically if we want to um, fetch lots of data uh, for uh, let's say we want films, we want characters of these films, we want planets, we're already hitting several um, 
uh, API endpoints, meaning we need to consolidate all this data on uh, front end, whether it's mobile, whether it's web. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for the, for the repo. Um, yeah, and if you consolidate this on, uh, on, on the client, then obviously you will have overfetching because let's say I want the title of this film and I want characters of this film. I don't need to know the episode ID and opening crawl and all, all these data. <coughs> and lots of time, uh, times it results in like lots and lots of data and all this data you need to uh, kind of consolidate on the client. And this is one problem. Other problem, if we want to version this API, we need to introduce like V2 of this API and it, it just won't end. Um, so this is like lots of problems in RESTful API. So how does GraphQL uh, comes to solve it? Well, it's sort of magic, right? Well, this bootcamp is not about magic. This bootcamp is about like teaching you how uh, you actually can uh, use GraphQL, how you can create your own GraphQL server. We will create GraphQL server uh, with uh, Node.js, but you totally can create this with like any uh, um, like server technology that you like. You want Elixir, you want Ruby, you want .NET, you want something else. Um, you can do that. There are like a bunch of GraphQL um, servers for, for that. Um, so, Let's talk a little bit about our agenda for this uh, bootcamp, and then we will just dive into the first day into all of this. So on the first day, we will start with the core principle, describing what GraphQL is. We will see it in action. We will see how uh, how it works, how you can query data, how you can. Uh, yeah, there is a question: Do we need to know Angular? So um, th this bootcamp is basically universal kind of thing because tomorrow we will be uh, using angular react of you uh, like three of them to um, actually consume graphql api and uh, we will also do vanilla js so you will uh, be kind of covered in terms of all um, major front-end frameworks um, so yeah you don't need to know like something specific um so <coughs> yeah we will talk about uh core principle queries mutation subscription aliases uh, variables this is for today tomorrow we will um consume graphql api in react angular view apps and um, obviously you can do it with uh, vanilla js you can do it in react native you can do it in view native in native script and and lots of others. Uh, we'll talk about authorization tomorrow and about uh, various tooling that will help us in uh, creating our API. So up to this day, like uh, today and tomorrow, we will be using, um, um, we won't be creating our own server. We will be using um, uh, se several things uh, for that. Um, but like on the third day, we will actually start creating our our own server. Um, we will uh, talk about like um, yeah the the bootcamp will include the server side part of the server and API. Yeah, it will include so on the day three we will have fragment input values directives introspection, and then we will start actually creating our server in Node connecting it to um, a database and like fetching everything. Uh, yeah, there will be React hooks. Uh, <laughs> that is the popular questions, uh, question recently. Uh, actually, I did a stream about using GraphQL with React hooks uh, on Thursday when hooks were uh, actually released officially. Um, yeah, and on, on fourth day, we will um, talk about more uh, in depth on uh, server side, how to create resolvers, about interfaces, unions, validation, execution, stuff like that. Um, okay, so um, yeah, let's get into some code and um, uh, yeah. 
So let's go to our um, repo that you all got. So uh, this is the repo you got in um, in, in mail. <coughs> for uh, for today, you don't have any specific requirements. For uh, tomorrow, there will be install in Node. Or you can use either of these frameworks, or you can actually use all three of them. It's your call, basically. Also, if you don't want to uh, create them locally, you totally can do it with Code Sandbox. So this is for tomorrow and day three and four, uh, you will need Docker and Docker Compose. Actually, you will need Docker for uh, today exercises, but you will have description how to install it in uh, exercise uh, uh, markdown file. <coughs> yeah. Um, So let's start. We actually need to. Um, we want to see how GraphQL looks like, right? So what we will do. Uh, I will. I have several things here. So we will use sample blog that I've created. Um, sample blog API. And, um, I will use um, Star Wars API. So let's start with sample blog API. So the thing is, um, if you want to set up your API, and actually it's kind of a bonus thing for um, for you um, if you want to do it at home or not. It's not like a mandatory homework or something. Uh, so I told you that I work for Hasura. So Hasura basically gives you real-time GraphQL API on top of um, Postgres, uh, whether it's an existing or a new one. So, and it has this cool feature of getting start, uh, started with uh, Heroku Free Team. So you can go to hasura.io, you can go to the quick start and just deploy it to Hasura. It doesn't con cost anything, it's just a free tier on, uh, on Heroku. What it will do, uh, yeah, sure, I can zoom the screen. That's better. That's better, the, the zoom. Okay, so um, I want some uh, like test app. Uh, test app is not available, let's call it um, GraphQL test app. And I can just deploy this app to Heroku. Uh, is a source similar to Prisma? Uh, no, because with Prisma um, you can actually create your uh, server, right? Uh, with Hasura you can basically run it in container on any cloud and uh, on top of any Postgres or Postgres extensions. And actually you can migrate from Firebase to Postgres and uh, uh, yeah, from, from uh, like even JSON to Postgres. So uh, right now it's deployed. So I can view my app. So we will be using this one. So this is the Hasura console and basically why, uh, why I'm giving you this as um, something, a bonus thing you can do at home because there is a data tab and all of these is connected to Postgres database. So you can actually create your tables. You can set uh, like unique IDs, generate random IDs, and like do lots of stuff here, uh, do uh, like connections uh, and everything. Like all GraphQL API will be automatically generated for you. So uh, I won't do it right now. If you um, interested how, um, how it's done, I actually streamed it today at um, in the morning, PST. Um, how much should one know about NoSQL database to get the most from this bootcamp? You don't have to um, know basically anything about like NoSQL or SQL databases. Uh, you can get like the most uh, from both, like from knowing about SQL database or NoSQL database. Uh, okay, so um, let me just open existing um, 
one I created for you, this one. So this is the sample blog app. <coughs> and uh, if you're interested to um, see where I um, streamed about like how I created all um, this data here, uh, um, I um, streamed it here on Twitch. So it's available there if you want to see how it was done. I did it today. So uh, here I have just regular um, post uh, database. It looks like this. I have posts, I have comments, user and profile. Post is connected to a user by user ID foreign key. And it's this is connected to profile and uh, comments are also connected to uh, they have post id they have user id so this is the the eld if you will um, and uh, here i have a bunch of data actually i don't have lots of data here <coughs> so let's dive into graphql and we'll see what it actually is um, so um yeah so graphql uh, has its and uh, let's open this is hasura console and i also want to open um another one the star wars api so and this one So um, we will actually use this tool when we'll talk about tooling. If this is called graphical, uh, I don't know where, yeah. Um, okay, I had some random notifications, so that's weird. Um, anyway, so we have, um, and I leave the spoiler here. Let me just delete that. So uh, this is Star Wars API. The GraphQL Star Wars API. So what it actually gives me, it gives me this awesome tool, Graphical. So um, probably you've used Postman for REST API. So with, um, with REST, you have lots of endpoints. Uh, no, you're not supposed to. Uh, uh, code along uh, with me you will have exercises later on this is zoom in here and this is zoom in here thanks for reminding about zoom in okay so this is basically in Hasura console you have the same graph graphical API on steroids embedded so um, as I said like with the rest you have a bunch of endpoints so you have uh, get request, post request, um, and uh, um, like pull, delete, whatever. With the GraphQL, we you have only one endpoint, and this endpoint you you have to um, to send a request to this endpoint using post um, and uh, pass specific format, specific query format. So, what? Why it's actually a really good thing. GraphQL is a typed um, query language, meaning you will see on the server side uh, when we'll do the server side. If you define your types, um, you can basically even consolidate several resources. You can have one. Uh, is the part where his uh, where, where I um, tables made um, yeah uh, it was just pre I cr uh, created these earlier today you can uh, follow me at Twitch and see the latest video on uh, on 
uh, Twitch how it's uh, how it's done. But in a nutshell, you go here, you click create table, and you set up things, and uh, then you will have insert row, and you can just add data. I, I hope this answers the question. So um, yeah, let's get back to the um, to the graphical. Um, so GraphQL is typed, meaning if I define types and if I define um, how I resolve these types, then I can even consolidate several uh, resources. Um, and there is like several concepts. For uh, for example, I have various queries. I will ha have mutations. I have subscriptions. We'll talk um, more in depth about them in a bit. But it's important to understand there are several types things, uh, um, either it's string, int, or uh, specifically defined types. As we have, for example, planets connection is specifically defined type. If you, I click on it, it will have a bunch of info. Now the cool part, I haven't created any of these documentation. So this documentation will be created automatically for me when I use graphical. Meaning I only need to define my schema, I need only to define my types, and then I will have automatically created documentation and uh, I can traverse it. I, if I don't know my API endpoints, I can start like searching through docs and I see that I have like fields, all fields and uh, all people and stuff like that. So um, the idea is that I have fields, so I can query things by having this type of syntax. <coughs> Let's actually do it from here, because I want blog posts. So I uh, want to query, yeah, introspection for the win, that's right. Uh, I want to query uh, posts, and as you can see, I have auto-completion. So these are all uh, queries that I can query. So I can query posts, and with Hasura it's created automatically for me. So I can query posts, and I want, I don't know what my post has. So I can totally go into documentation here, into posts, and actually I see what uh, data have on my post. So let's say I want subject and I want content. So it's kind of resembles, uh, resemble uh, JSON, right? Or like JavaScript objects, but it's not it. So the common mistake is people start doing that. And this is, this is false. So this is specifically a specific query language that you need to um, to, uh, to write it down, and you actually passes, uh, pass it as a string to um, with post request. We will do like CURL um, with post um, in a bit, like to see how it's done. So if I run this query, I will get my posts. So what is the cool thing about it? I have, these are called field, by the way. So I have various fields, and I have the exact same data returned from from my query. Um, so uh, the cool thing about it: no underfetching, no overfetching. That's really cool part. And um, I actually know what uh, what the data structure will be returned because this is the data structure I queried. So um, <laughs> this is well, I spent two weeks writing everything myself. Uh, well, it, you probably learned a lot when you, you've done that. Uh, so um, now the another cool thing because everything is about like I have all these types defined and I have uh, here posts have user ID as a foreign key connected to users 
and like with Hasoro specifically I can see it in relations, in object relations, in rail relations. Uh, if you want to learn, uh, by the way, if you learn, want to learn more about like Hasura and all like features and stuff like that, I will stream at 11 a.m. PST on this Thursday. Um, so if if you want to on on Hasura streams, I can share the link later on in the repo. Um, so the cool thing because I have these relations. Now I can query my user, but not, let's say my, my table has user ID, but I want to query, so in with REST, I would uh, query posts and then I would get user ID and then I will need to, uh, 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 to kind of fetch another, um, like call another um, REST endpoint with uh, this specific user ID to get user data. I don't need to do that in GraphQL. I can just get last name and I get can get first name. And uh, even more than that, like users have um, posts, right? So I can get subject of every post. And that's not all, like all my users I have a profile, so I can actually get avatar URL from profile. So let's see, it's one, two, three, at least four API endpoints, all specifically created API endpoint with REST. Here I just get the data. And how cool is that? Uh, in addition to that, if I don't remember something if I like don't know you've you already seen auto completion so if I don't remember something I just can look here in the docs um, let's do it with the Star Wars API let's say I don't want to I, I don't know at all like what I actually want to uh, um, get from this API but like with a uh, brief overview I have all themes, all people, all planets, all species, all starships, and all vehicles. Let's do some something really, really complex. Let's query all um, all planets, and my planets is a planets connection, so it has planets array. My planets array. Each planet has uh, its name. In addition to this name, it has like diameter, rotation period, something like that. So this is not complex. This is just getting all these uh, planets. But let's uh, let's see what else I, uh, I have here on API. I have residence. Mm, that's interesting. Let's get resident connection, residence, and every resident has a name. So let's see. Nice, so Luke Skywalker uh, is a resident of Tatooine. This is cool, but that's not all. If I go to planet's resident, residence is actually a person. The person has name, birth year, gender, um, it's also uh, also has species, so let's see which species are our uh, what exactly that connection uh, uh, sent to us how to solve them by field uh, by name. Uh, yeah, it's we, we will do it today. We will solve things today. You actually have exercises in the homework to solve things. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Um, but we will totally do it. Uh, so I have, um, and regarding the, what exactly that connection, this is um, Star Wars API running on Heroku. So this is, if you just go here, you able to query. <coughs> it's an open uh, API, no authentication here.
So, um, I want to get my species, uh, my, I want to get resident species. And species is another, um, is another connection to another type. And species has name, classification, and uh, uh, what was that? Um, classification. Um, let's say language. So I don't need home world because I'm already I know the home world, right? But that's not it. I'm like I really want to, it to be complex. I want to get vehicles of all residents of Tatooine. So my vehicle connection will have a name. And I actually don't know what my vehicles have. So I have planets connection was residence and go here, residence, residence. Can even get eye color. Um, and uh, vehicle connection. So vehicles, it's a vehicle, it has name, model, um, cost and credits. If I want to buy this uh, uh, <coughs> like um, snow speeder. Um, yeah, I want. I don't know how much is the rate for this uh, credits, but uh, yeah, I can totally get all of these. And um, let me uh, let's make it more interesting. I want vehicles, and I want to know in which film this vehicle was featured. So I can add films. So here you go. This one was at the Empire Strikes Back and uh, yeah, so um, you have like Obviously, like this uh, Star Wars uh, API is actually um, connected to RESTful API, I think. Um, so the, the cool thing with uh, with GraphQL, you are not limited to a specific resource. Um, for example, I can have planets uh, resolved from MongoDB. I can have vehicles resolved from Postgres. I can have residents resolved from SQL Server, and all of these can be consolidated with GraphQL, and um, it optimizes everything. And it just like it will retell you basically when you create this API, you need to kind of deal with optimizations, and uh, we will be doing that on uh, day four, and you will get everything back. So this is like the the fancy example of like really like drilling down. Uh, into that. So um, let's get back to our posts. <coughs> now with our posts, I want some, uh, something interesting. So I get, uh, I have only one post. And um, I want actually to limit it to something. Uh, no, actually, let's do it here. I want planets, but I want only first five. So these are called arguments, and you can pass them here. So I call and obviously any of this, uh, like first five, something like that. So then it's limited to five. <coughs> and obviously I need to define them on server um, and this is the simple example let's see more complex example so with Hasura when you create these posts uh, like when you create them here you have automatically lots of things created uh, 
for your GraphQL API, including various interesting arguments. So let me check what is my ID here. Uh, so let's say have a user ID and I want to get all posts um, of this user ID. So what I can do, I can use argument where uh, this one, which is post boolean expression. So if I don't know how to write it, I can just go inside uh, and see. So where is something out of, uh, it's supposed to be something out of these. So I want to check that my user ID and this is the comparison expression. So my user ID can be equal to user ID. Now let's run it. Uh, something wrong here. I think, yeah, I forgot the curly braces and okay, cool. I have my um, blog post here with the uh, um, like with where by user ID and stuff like that. So now I want to order my blog posts by let's say timestamp and I want my timestamp I actually don't remember what is my uh, what like how I can order so I go again to posts order by timestamp and it can be ascending or descending So nothing happening here because I have only one blog post. <coughs> so I have ascending, descending and stuff like that. This is actually not a MongoDB. This is a Postgres. So um, yeah, the, so these are arguments and they can be of various complexity. Now, another cool thing uh, that I want to show you about Hasura, um, so it has this analyze thing and basically it converts your GraphQL to SQL quer queries. So you can actually see how it will be queried. Um, this is only like Hasura feature. Um, what uh, what you need to do like when what uh, when we will create the server, we will create resolvers that will resolve data from database and stuff like that. What Hasura is a little bit different is like more optimized. Um, yeah, yeah. Where selection? Yeah, it was a little bit like MongoDB filter. I agree. Um, okay, cool. So these are queries, these are arguments. So let's say, um, let's do something like that. I want to uh, actually, let's keep it all going. Uh, arguments depend on uh, what you define on your server. You can totally define whatever. Uh, whatever you like as, as arguments. You, you will see you define your queries on the server. So Hasura it just creates all of these for you, for the convenience to like create all of these, uh, to like use um, typical like filtering and ordering and stuff like that. Here, for example, um, it's different, not because of the database, because how it was defined on the server you can totally define an uh, argument that will be called uh, something and will do something. Uh, so it's like up to you how you define it. Um, 
Yeah, so let's uh, talk about um, something. Uh, um, regarding aliases. So we will have all the type and we want to limit it to, let's say, one blog post. And uh, let's say I want the first blog post and I want the last blog post. So I can totally do something like that. If I will run it, you already see it will fail because it's the same field. So this is, um, it looks like it can be a problem or it, it looks like why should I use like several queries in one request? Well, sometimes you actually need to do that or sometimes like for convenience, you, you want to um, uh, use only one query per request. So uh, I can actually use um, aliases. Uh, let's call this one as first post. Um, this one as last post so now if we run it we will have first post here and last post here this is also useful not only for this uh, um, like putting like two queries in in one place it's also used for um, renaming things so for example if your um, api is named <coughs> so let's say I have last name, but instead I want just name, I can totally do that. Uh, so these uh, these are aliases. Um, in addition to that, I can, like with queries, I for example can omit query world and just run it like that. Additional thing that I can do, and I should do actually, it's best practice, I should name my query. So this is the operation name. The operation type will be query. So there are three operation types, query, mutation, and subscription. And there are, uh, and operation name is something that you define. Um, so this is like for get posts. Now let's say uh, my limit here, I want actually to call it first and posts, and I will call it last and posts. And I want this limit to be something that I, um, I want to create one query and I want to reuse it um, in different places with different limit values. So obviously I need some kind of variable here. Yeah, query name can be anything. It's just like whatever you write here. <coughs> so uh, here comes the concept of variables. Um, I want to limit it to some kind of n. Will each query be a string in my client send? Uh, actually, before getting into variables, let me show you how it will look like. So I have this query. Um, actually, um, let's write a little bit less. Uh, Let's do a smaller query just for CRL. And I will show how how you send it to server as using CRL. So my query will be all planets. Uh, no, Hasura is not like Prisma. Hasura is a real-time GraphQL, um, open source real-time GraphQL API on top of existing on you um, Postgres database that you can use as Docker image deploy anywhere in any cloud and uh, yeah um, so all planets uh, I will get planets name A small query 
So now, let me find my CRL thing. Um, let's just open. So this is the, the API. So now what I will do is call CRL. It's po it's a post method. It has headers of content type application JSON, and I pass data <coughs> something like that. Um, query. Uh, here will be my query. I think, uh, yeah, something like that. Ah, sorry. Um, so my query was this one, right? This one. This is the query. Um, where you can see it? Um, okay. What is super? This screen is super zoomed in. Of the of the console. One. So I think, um, let's try this one. Okay, it's fine, cool. Uh, all planets. Let's just do it here. Hopefully it will work. I, I, I think you, you get the idea, but yeah, let's let's do it. Uh, so closing, and then I need my endpoint. Cool. So it's working. Um, that that's basically how you. Uh, how you call it? Uh, CRL content type. Yeah. Um, okay. This is for uh, queries. Um, yeah, we will do coffee break in a bit. We will we'll talk um, a bit about like. Um, I will explain how we do variables, and before we go into mutations and subscriptions then we will uh, have um, like you will have a short break for coffee or questions um, so I want to use um, to limit this with variables so I will call it n. this is this will be variable n yeah always use post uh, So now I want to define my n as a integer which is required. So I have to define type here. If I just define it, because uh, if I don't define anything here, then it will just fail. So if I run it, I will get for validation failed because I expect value for non null type. Int is has to be something, right? Um, so um, yeah, um, 
now if I run it like that it just works because it's not required but I actually want to require it because I have this limit here <coughs> now how do I pass variables um, so I think I have to zoom out a bit and zoom in again so I have query variables in here and I can define that my n will be 1 now if I run it I get everything here so if I define it as something it will even not let me do it here and that's the cool part because everything is typed I cannot make mistakes for like type mistakes uh, stuff like that so uh, you can think about that uh, like sort of like ORM from like server to like front uh, even more than that it's like you, everything is typed on the server you have all these uh, like queries and mutations defined on the server and on front end you can basically query any data that you want uh, so if you define your server once with like all the connection and stuff like that uh, with all the like resolvers we'll, we'll talk um, like on the fourth day what resolvers are but if you define your server then um, basically you don't need to version your API you can just like on web use one type of queries on mobile use other types of queries and all the data fetching and querying is in the hands of um, front-end developers um, and as back-end developer you are focused into defining uh, yeah if uh, if anyone confused yeah you can do it on uh, on Star Wars API totally um, let me show you something else in addition to what you can do if you want to code along yeah variables are good for pagination there are like several uh, type of um, uh, we will actually talk about paginations uh, we'll create pagination on third day <coughs> so um, what I want to show you something really really cool um, and it will be actually in your exercises with description so I created this um, and Postgres everything like with data everything is deployed on uh, uh, like on Heroku, both uh, Postgres and both um, the engine, Azure engine. But if I want to run it locally, um, let's actually. Um, I think I will uh, just commit. No, um, I will commit it later on. But if you want to run it locally, you can totally do that. Um, and let's actually do it together so if we go to settings config parse uh, no that's the different API uh, we will have sample blog <coughs> it has um, config vars and it has this database uh, client decides what data to get red and rest api decide what to give yeah um you decide on a back end you decide what like how to resolve all the data how to connect all the how to optimize all data and uh, the client and everything else like getting uh the data is in the hands of client so it's basically best for both worlds um, so what we will do now 
we will actually uh, run docker so I will run uh, docker on port 8080 and um, what I need to do you you have all these descriptions in uh, in your homework but if you want to run Hasura with existing locally on existing database you just run docker with Hasura GraphQL database uh, URL um, environment variable with all the like this is the connection to the Postgres and then uh, yeah we'll run it now um, ah, I think it's already running yeah it's already running uh, okay let's just go to localhost So this is uh, I think it's a different database something. Yeah, it's a different database, sorry. Um, let's just copy that. Just copy that. Um, let's stop our instance here yeah you can do homework on windows um, okay so now Um, I think it was the, just a second. Let's, uh, sorry, um, just trying to copy the, so you will have shell script basically, but Let's try to run it again. It will take time to bring it up. Ah, um, okay, well, um, okay, now it's running. Uh, take time to bring it up, I think. Let's see some what's wrong here. Um, yeah, something's wrong here. Let's see what's what's the problem. Maybe I haven't co uh, copied it properly. Now is yeah 
okay so now this is the same database so we're using it with existing database and uh, so you can run it locally and actually I will show you another cool uh, thing that you can do if you don't want to like jump back and forth from uh, this one to um, to Hasura console you can actually go to remote schemas and you can just add remote schema here uh, Star Wars API and this is the concept called schema stitching so right now I will be able to query my posts and I will be able to query all films so this one um, okay let's do a short break for coffee and uh, um, questions so if you have questions before we dive into mutations and subscriptions um, just paste them in chat um, set up factories to build fake data in Hasura um, not sure what you actually mean <coughs> like you mean like instead of just filling this up or uh, you can totally use mutations for creating stuff and then just fill things up we, we will actually do this we will fill data um, how would one restrict queries to certain tables or data specific um, <coughs> if you create your own server um, you do it through we, we will talk about that we will talk about authorization with Hasura in a nutshell you have if you go here post permissions you can create a role and then with custom check and do like if ID equals something Hasura is available in um, you, you can install it on docker anywhere not only in Heroku you can install it on AWS, on Azure, on the Google Cloud Platform, on uh, anything, locally, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, and restricting data with Hasura is done here with the uh, GraphQL uh, in general. If you create your own server, is up to your implementation. <coughs> Is similar to graph CMS. What do you mean? Uh, that's right. You define um, your schema, and um, you can build a query um, as you want. Query mutation, anything. And um, regarding question, if it's similar to Graph CMS, if you mean um, by this question, if Hasura is similar, it's no, it's not that. Like uh, Hasura is open source and free, and basically you can uh, uh, create this on top of anything uh, of anything. Um, I think I wrote it somewhere. Yeah, so in exercises you will have um, 
link to um, blog post I recently uh, wrote about like covering all the features. <coughs> also, if you're really interested into like more in depth uh, overview, 11 a.m. BST Thursday also will be recorded and uploaded to YouTube. On uh, this will be on Twitch on Hasura strings. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, good question. How do you recommend to start to introduce GraphQL in the company? First step and second step. So, um, well, uh, it depends on uh, like how your um, architecture is structured. But basically, I would start writing all uh, new things uh, using GraphQL and. Um, uh, like uh, slow gradually migrating everything to GraphQL so the cool thing is uh, if you um, like still need support you can support both you can support Trez for old APIs and for all new you will be using GraphQL um, if you really need to um, like y you can actually run GraphQL on top of REST because basically your resolvers can query uh, can basically resolve data from rest endpoint it's not that uh, performant it's possible but like i i would probably uh, just go for a start uh, not probably like i did this for several clients uh, i started writing new uh, apis for the GraphQL and then old APIs are slowly deprecated or more just legacy APIs uh, stuff like that so uh, the first uh, this is like in general in terms of steps I would say the first step uh, is to take portion of uh, maybe a feature and uh, write it with GraphQL API and you will immediately see the benefits uh, of that like it, also like in speed of development in like reliability and like in everything and um, with that you can actually um, <coughs> justify to move like to spend time like moving legacy apis stuff like that i hope this answers <coughs> Okay, I think uh, that's it for coffee break. Let's get into mutations. Now there will be lots of cool stuff. Okay, so we talked about variables. Um, we uh, yeah, let's let's do mutations. So my data here is. Uh, Another last question, what kind of advantages can I sell to business in order to support this introduction? Reducing costs, development costs, like in terms of time, uh, maintenance, because maintaining REST API is uh, painful and like it's a known thing. Maintaining GraphQL is not, not a big deal. Um, Yeah, uh, this. Yeah, this is a good blog post. If we are already sharing blog posts, let me share something. Um, yeah. So, um, um, regarding advantages, so obviously reducing costs of uh, maintenance, reducing of. Uh, Development speed, develop, developer happiness, because uh, back and forth from if you have separate teams, uh, back end and front end, going back and forth, like please change that part of API, no, please change that one. I need this kind of uh, response or I need that kind of response. It's uh, it's frustrating at some point, um, and. Um, 
also if you heavily uh, use mobile this is like a uh, really good thing to go with because uh, for mobile usually api is a little bit different so you need to introduce different rest endpoints if using rest and um, it can be really painful in addition to that we will see tomorrow uh, we will use GraphQL with uh, with Apollo and it has caching uh, built in so uh, yeah <coughs> do you recommend making your own schema we will do this uh, creating our own schema on uh, um, like on third day uh, so uh, what I wanted to share with you just a second is this blog post uh, is this blog post and this is uh, basically an overview of a bunch of Azure features. So if you're interested, it's just an overview. Um, yeah, and how you connect it to business logic and, and to like serverless and like lots of things. But this is not like for this bootcamp. This is more of like more on the serverless side. But yeah, totally check this blog post out. Uh, okay, let's do mutations. So what I want to do now uh, Yeah, the chat will be available after the session, I think. Tyler uh, Is the chat? Okay, yeah, it will be available. Um, okay, let's do mutation. So now I want to, so let, let's check our um, Star Wars API. So this is a read-only API. So if I go to docs, I can have only query. Here I have also mutations and subscriptions. So let's see what mutations are. And I will call my mutation add post. And I will insert post. So here I have um, an uh, argument called objects, and let's actually go into docs and we'll see how, how it looks like. Have bunch of inserts, deletes, updates. So basic run. A little bit more than basic. And I have post insert input. If I go in, into it, I have a uh, bunch of things. So what I want to create is uh, I want a subject of uh, call it like second blog post and I will have a content hey there uh so this is for the blog post right and then i will return let me just close it i will return um timestamp and id if i run it i will have validation failed and why is that because uh, very variables, but they are unexpected, so I don't need them anymore. I can just remove those. So if I run it, I have not null vi uh, violation. User ID has to be something. But let's say uh, I want to create a new user. So what I typically would do, I will call create new user and then <coughs> And then I will um, uh, get this uh, user ID and put it inside. And uh, actually, let's do that. Let's call it add user. 
and insert users objects and my user ID will have first name and we'll have last name and it has something so uh, the uh, thing with mutation I have I need to specify what to insert and I have to specify what to return because every mutation uh, returns something um, sometimes I want the whole post to user or whatever or sometimes I want just confirmation sometimes I want something else so here I have uh, returning and I have affected roles so my returning will be ID if I run it hmm I have profile ID that is not created so it's kind of uh, I need to create profile ID and then I could need to create user ID and save it and it, it's like a it's a process right but actually with gra so with the rest I would call one endpoint create post uh, profile ID and then create user ID and then create uh, post ID you have separate endpoint for creating all of these um, but actually because I'm using GraphQL I can say that my user here is something uh, is has like first name Vladimir and last name Nopic and then I also need a profile right so I want say data I want profile uh, That's confusing. Just a second. So I have data. This is the yeah. I need profile. My profile. Yeah. Okay. Now there has data and my data. Uh, my profile will have avatar URL. So it will create. The basically what will happen here? I will create a blog post already we and um, I will create a, a user with profile so basically I'm doing three uh, uh, three things um, regarding JSON notation so you need to, uh, not to confuse uh, several things so this is that part which is without dots and this is the one we used in query so for <coughs> objects here passing to arguments uh, it's like a JSON without dot notation uh, without like a uh, commentation um, so now let's see if it will work okay cool it created several things let's go to data and uh, actually no we won't go to data we will just query we already know how to query stuff right so let's get uh, let's get our um, our posts um, subject content and now uh, we'll have user first name last name profile avatar URL now if we run it I have two blo uh, blog posts so it's already created <coughs> now let's do something interesting um, let's actually actually we'll do it later on anyway so um, let's go into data and let's see users here so now we have two users we have Vladimir Novik and we have John Smith. Profile also has 
to post IDs. Um, does it return post ID? Can it be user ID? Um, it depends uh, what you define, but basically, let's see. Um, we can see it here. Query for reading the data mutation for creating, updating, and removing data. Yeah, that's that's right. Um, so let's see our insert posts response returning no it's returning posts because it's defined here as posts so if it's defined as users then you are able to get users um, but let's see what you we can actually do something interesting we can go to our returning we'll get the id because it's post we can get actually a user id of this post and uh, that's not all we can get first name we can get last name everything that's basically connected to post so we can get user id and id yeah by by put delete and post from rest that's right um, So um, let's actually delete post. So we have this post ID. Let's delete our post if it matches this post ID. <coughs> so um, it will be called delete post. And actually I will use variables here. Um, the post ID will be <coughs> UID and uh, it will be delete post where ID equal Let's see what what it returns. Uh, the schema defined as return. The um, no the 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 thing with the schema, all of these types, I defined. Uh, when you define server, you define all this type. This is basically the schema. So. Um, basically all of these queries all of these mutations all of these types are defined um, regarding graphql handle transactions uh, we will talk about that um, a bit later on it's like too early for that for now uh, okay so uh let's see we have delete posts response well, actually, we will return affected roles, I think. And we will return the deleted. <coughs> deleted post, and here we will put our variable. So here, my post ID, actually I have completion here, as you can see. My post ID will be this one. Now let's run it. Okay, one affected rows, rows returning. And uh, it was supposed to be a three block po post, right? Because we added one, then I deleted one. So it's supposed to be back to two. And that's what, what's happening here. So let's actually try to do that again. Let's insert third block post. So the cool thing also 
delete pause is defined on server. Yeah, that, that's right. All of these mutations and queries are defined on server. Specifically to Hasura, it, like, the engine transformed that to uh, SQL. But basically what we will do when we'll create our node server, we will define our schema on the server. And this schema is uh, what defines all of these. Uh, now the, the thing is, every schema, um, um, no, schema is not an operation of our DB table. Schema is, um, you can treat it as something like that. You define types and you define how you resolve this data. This data can be from anywhere. You can resolve data from variable or um, JSON or API or whatever. It does matter the implementation. The important part, when you define your schema, you define your types, then you um, you are able to um, query all of these defined queries. So here, for example, you have comments by uh, well, primary key, pause, all of these are defined for you. Uh, Hasura defined this automatically for you, but we will do this on the third and fourth day. We will define all of this. We'll define this schema. Now, another cool thing, and it's kind of sneak peek to what we will talk about on our fourth day. So there is a thing called introspection, uh, which basically gives us the ability to see all of these, like use this documentation explorer. This schema is also like publicly available unless you define in authorization headers and stuff like that, but it's available for uh, like um, querying the actual like types and, and stuff like that. Um, so it's not defined here in documentation, but yeah, uh, before that, let's, let's uh, uh, take a look at something here. So we have add post, we have delete post, we have both of them, so we can, if they are named, and only if they are named in graphical, we can basically choose whichever we want to run. Uh, and yeah, it's unexpected, the variable is unexpected. <coughs> Let's run it. Okay, we have three blog posts. Let's see. Okay, now it's three blog posts. Now let's delete blog post. Run it with delete. And nothing is deleted. Why is that? Different ID, right? Because it's created automatically for us. Um, so I just need to copy this ID. <coughs> post it here and delete post and now it's supposed to be deleted. Yeah, now we have two blog posts. <coughs> okay, cool. So this is for mutations. Um, so to recap, we talked about queries, we talked about variables, we talked about aliases, about uh, what would, would the CRL command look like if you're including query variables, you need to pass them with, uh, with data. So you had like, you had this one, like when, when we did CRL, it was query, right? So in addition to query, we will have variable, variables. Like we'll have variables and we'll pass them. <laughs> um, okay, so now Uh, this could be a great tool for business people who also likes to query. Uh, what do you mean? Like which tool? Uh, 
okay so um we have and post we have delete posts uh we talked about arguments we talked about aliases operations um dations and now the last one for today we will talk about subscriptions and subscriptions they kind of have the separate it's kind of separate topic they are really how to uh, like the sort of how to implement on uh, on the server uh, there are a bunch of uh, platforms that, that, that support subscriptions the idea with subscriptions is that you have <coughs> websocket connection um, and uh, based on this connection like whenever something is updated it's reflected automatically like pushed from the server to the client if you will um so um the idea how it's done we'll see tomorrow um when we'll consume graphql api but um in a nutshell how it's done is we check uh give concrete examples when you're explaining you mean regarding subscriptions um yeah sure i will, will do subscriptions here that, that's not a problem. I will just explain in this in a nutshell. Um, and now uh, specific examples with how to consume um, subscriptions, we will uh, see it tomorrow. Uh, so the idea is in a nutshell, and again, it will be explained tomorrow, is, um, is that um, we have this operation type we talked about, right? Query mutation subscription, and we have operation name. We will query, we will actually filter if we we'll have, if our operation name is subscription, then we will do it through WebSockets. If it's not, we will do it through a regular pipeline. This is in general, but let, let's see how subscriptions look lo looks like. So, uh, we will see how they're used. So I will keep this here and I will create new subscription. We'll see what's available. We have posts. Let's see what posts <coughs> we have like uh, Post, um, what was it? Subject, content, user, first name, last name, profile, avatar URL. Um, let's call it uh, subscribe to. Um, whatever um, what will subscribe to post okay so the question is uh, where I work people from business some of them query the DB in order to generate the, this is less complex than a scale uh, well with the GraphQL you can totally create uh, like it's like for creating your API so um, if you create dashboard for a business people using GraphQL that's that's sure. Um, if you mean that you just expose endpoint or graphical to them and they just query it from graphical, yeah, that's easier. That's easier for them than to query a scale. Um, but like, um, I have to emphasize that GraphQL is not related. Uh, even though it's like QL, it's not related. Um, to um, um, SQL at all, it's just query language for API. So if you want to um, pull the data from SQL database or no SQL database or JSON or variable or whatever, that that's that's fine. If you want to pull the uh, pull it from like SQL database instead of and people instead of using SQL queries, they'll use your GraphQL API. That's also uh, totally fine. Uh, okay, so we have subscribe to posts. So subscription um, in general is listening to changes on 
on specific uh, specific fields. So here we want to listen to changes on posts and whenever something is updated on any of those we will get our result. So uh, we will hit subscribe to post. Yeah, we have unexpected variables here. Let's click subscribe to post. And we have two blog posts here. So right now, what I will do, I will open my explorer in a different field. So whenever I, um, here I will add a new blog post. <coughs> I expect, actually, let me do it. Um, let me try to fit the screen, both of them. Um, so this is the subscription that is running. So here, I want to add post. Um, unexpected variables, uh, yeah, let's remove that. And you see it's updated automatically in real time. It's updated again. Um, the questions regarding the nesting, um, is the nesting similar to left to right joints in SQL? So, um, um, the, it's important to emphasize that like in Hasura, for example, if we see the nesting, you can analyze the actual SQL that, that is executed. But this is specific to Hasura. On, um, <coughs> like when you create GraphQL server, and you have nesting, basically you connect between your, uh, you, you have like two uh, different types and you resolve these types. We will see when we will create server, basically. So now let's, uh, I don't have an ID here, but let's try to get this ID and delete our blog post. this ID and then my post ID will be that one, uh, that one. Um, is, is it subscribing to post as whole or the only fields that mentioned in subscription? Fields that are mentioned in subscription. So, um, let's see, we have first, second, third, and third again. Okay, now one is removed. <coughs> so this is super cool, right? Because we have, uh, we can create um, subscription, we can push changes from server, we can um, um, like for, for critical uh, stuff, for, for real-time stuff. Um, and this is this is important, so the, the, the thing is we again filter operation through the um, operation type and operation name and then according to that we know if we go into WebSocket or we go to HTTPS with POST. So with subscriptions is obviously it's not it's a different way to connect. It's not just a regular post because we need to have this connection all the time. <coughs> so this is for subscriptions. Um, so let's let's recap and let let's actually do the following. Um, I will add uh, well, less lesson notes. I'm not 
not necessarily. Uh, let me just double check. Uh, okay. So this is the repo that, that you have. So for day one, how I deal with staging prod environment? Um, depends on like where it's running or something like that. You mean like with the uh, like versioning or something like that? have um, like with a source specific I have engine that can be run on any of these <coughs> environments and uh, and then connect to like specific databases and have replication um, okay so um, yeah so I what I wanted to show and that's well because yeah, okay, so this is what you will have for your exercises, uh, several things. So this is the repo, I will push uh, changes here. This is the run Hasura locally. So it has connection to the um, GraphQL um, API with posts. So you will be able to create your post and uh, even uh, experiment with that. You have comments, so try to add comments to um, blog posts and, and stuff like that. We will see tomorrow how much blog posts we will, how many blog posts we will have in in our database. Um, so um, for exercise for every um, every day, I basically just empty it except for day one. So, um, notes are, are pretty simple, and just kind of speaker, uh, speaker notes, but um, feel free to use them if you want. Uh, so just in a nutshell, this is the uh, CURL, queries, arguments, <coughs> aliases, operation name, how it's done. Um, I forget to add variables, let's, let's actually Add something with variables, so something like that. Uh, okay, so this is the for the variables. Ah, you can also have default uh, variables using uh, equal in um, arguments. Um, mutations, uh, subscriptions. So this is just like a speaker speaker notes. <coughs> Let's go into overview for our um, exercises. So um, you install, or you need to install a server console in local environment. Um, for that, you need um, for running locally, you need to run um, to install Docker. Um, you need to install Docker. That's the question. I'm actually answering this question. So. You need to install Docker, um, then you can execute the script, uh, bash script, um, it will run Docker, or you can just run the command. So the idea is just running Docker on this port with this, envir this environment variable. <coughs> um, and uh, with this environment variable, and that's it, and this is the, the image. <coughs> so uh, you install Docker, then it will bring up Docker container with engine connect and uh, connection to Postgres API. You can read about it more in blog post I shared. Uh, you then access console on localhost eighty eighty. Please don't add fields uh, like tables and stuff like that to database because it's like. Uh, public one everyone will use it so um, please don't do it um, if you want to play around with uh, like setting um, um, setting Hasura locally actually let me just write it down here uh, 
us so if you want to do that you go here um, I'm getting started with docker So it's here. With your local version of Postgres, uh, check the docs. So this is the the link for. Um, so you, you get Docker Compose, you just run it, and then you have local Postgres. <coughs> and then you can play around with it. So actually, it's it's a better way. So you want um, like uh, you, you then can experiment with creating your own tables and then like doing um, well, like various things. Um, Star Wars API is available here. You can play with it here. Uh, you can add Star Wars API custom servers remote schema, as I showed you. Um, and then you have a bunch of exercises. So, um, like um, this one, how to execute uh, execute GraphQL request on CRL different queries that you need to do different mutations that you need to do <coughs> and bunch of subscriptions um, um not sure if this is discussed can you catch your results uh query in graphql much like what do you do with the rest apis um we will use uh, tomorrow when we'll consume these apis everything will be um we will use Apollo, it has uh, its own cache, so everything is cached. It's like automatically cached. <clears throat> um, yeah, so these are exercises, and uh, good luck with them. Um, that's it for today, unless you have uh, questions, I will be um, here for next like 15 minutes or uh, something like that so if you have questions I am here to answer them and uh, tomorrow we will um, consume um, GraphQL API with uh, React, Vue, Angular, Vanilla.js <coughs> talk about authorization and tooling uh, probably will be a bit more time than, than today um, because lo lots of things to cover tomorrow. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm, I'm still here if you have questions about like RefQL in general, how to um, like use things, like, yeah, if you have questions, I'm here. Union joins or uh, complements between sets. We will totally discuss that on fourth day. We uh, for, fourth day we have interfaces and unions specifically for the uh, like for the fourth day. Um, uh, can I explain the code in the list posts? Yeah, sure. Um, so what's happening here? We have the lead posts. And we have variable here. Uh, it's a mutation. Uh, mutation is uh, something that you call for um, uh, changing data. Either it's updating, deleting, inserting, stuff like that. So we have a name mutation called delete post. We have a, pa a variable that we pass here of type unique uh, ID. Um, then uh, we call delete post, which is Actually, let me stop my subscriptions here, which I can see in my docs here in my schema. So I have delete posts. 
and I, as I see here in the docs, it expects an argument called where that has specific type of where clause. So where clause is actually another type called post bool expression. It can be anything that you define. Um, and um, exclamation mark me means that it, it is required. I cannot delete post without UID. If I try to uh, try to run that, it won't work. I uh, it, it just means it's required. So I have these delete, uh, delete posts and I have this specific type. This type is defined on the server. Um, we will do such things uh, on our third and fourth day. Uh, and this type, if I drill down, consists of several fields. So this type has ID field. And ID field is of type, uh, yeah, uh, just a second. Okay, now it's pushed. Okay, so we have specific um, <coughs> ID of specific type um, UID comparison expression. Uh, this expression has equal, greater than, greater than equal, um, and stuff like that. All these fields are also defined on the server. Um, so if I go into equal, it's of type UID. And uh, this is where I pass my, uh, my post ID. Now, specifically to Hasura, and again, this is like specifically to Hasura. Um, this is uh, transformed to SQL queries uh, in Hasura console. For when we create our server, it will be like server code and, and, and resolvers and stuff like that. So specifically with Hasura, I can click analyze button, um, and I think I'm not sure why I cannot analyze this, but yeah, let's do it with something maybe without. Let's try the subscriptions. Uh, only, ah, yeah, uh, only queries can be analyzed. Sorry. Um, Let's find the query. So we can analyze this query and it's basically a select <coughs> a bunch of things. Okay, so this is the delete post. Um, and uh, um, like the analysis. Um, Uh, the question is why I'm using Hasura in a bootcamp um, because of um, the simplicity of uh, showing you the exact da data from database and how it's uh, connected to the uh, how like GraphQL API is created for that and also like it's pretty fast to uh, set this thing, uh, things up and, uh, and start using it but we will totally create our own node server on uh, um, third day and um, like I'm using Hasura for bootcamp like for first and second day and on third day we'll create our own server mm -hmm. um, uh, so uh, other questions um, go over the subscription example subscription example we have this one subscribe to post Basically, what happens here, we will uh, listen to all updates on post fields, on all of these fields, and whenever any update is, uh, is triggered, 
in, in the dat database a subscription will fire and will get the result that that what it means basically with subscription <coughs> um, can I delete a post without its ID no because uh, well I can I can have different workloads instead of ID I can put anything that I want here I can put uh, what was that um, like user and or stuff like that you can experiment on that later on but yeah I totally can do it not only with the post ID but with uh, additional things um, <coughs> Okay, regarding where older by uh, um, are not generally available in GraphQL. Basically, anything uh, that is defined here is is available. Um, okay, let let's let me explain this again. So on the server, you will have you define your schema. However, you define it. That's how you can uh, like. Uh, specify arguments here so if I will specify argument that like something then I totally can use it um, also another reason why I use Hasura because of lots of these uh, where and IDs defined and I want to show different uh, use cases and how we use uh, different arguments inside mutation subscription and stuff like that uh, so fields not list on subscription not be listed no uh, the, uh, only the one that will be uh, subscription will be listened uh, will the ui be able to listen to the server subscription yeah totally so the the whole idea of subscriptions is to listen to server uh, subscription so the connection is done through web sockets we will see tomorrow and uh, whenever server uh, something is updated on the server subscription uh, will fire and we'll see UI updated in real time if for some reason you don't need to be notified anymore it's possible to remove a subscription like unsubscribe totally we can totally do that um, uh, it's Apollo client similar to Asura being with GraphQL am I wrong uh, what, what do I mean? Which one? Ah, if Apollo client uh, is similar to Hasura, no, it's um, with Hasura you will also you uh, will use also Has uh, Apollo client tomorrow. So Apollo client is something that you need to use uh, for. Um, wait just a second. I use Hasura because it's set uh, get running runs with Postgres and easy for new visitors. Yeah, that's right. That, that's totally right regarding the uh, Apollo client so Apollo client will use it tomorrow for um, connecting to our GraphQL API from from the client so we'll use uh, its Angular version its view version and its react version and uh, this is what Apollo client is is a library a set of libraries actually that gives us an ability to connect to our GraphQL API so right now we have seen only server side of uh, GraphQL, uh, not uh, server side, but just like a general uh, syntax of GraphQL and uh, core concepts of GraphQL. We haven't seen server yet, and we haven't seen uh, a client yet. So what you see here in graphical, it's basically a web-based ID that can be exported from like any server even we will do it from server that we will create and um, uh, we will be able to use it uh, for querying data and stuff like that but the, the actual UI will be um, uh, like consuming our API will be through Apollo client from like any of the libraries okay Uh, 
is Hosoro using Paul Klein behind the scenes? Uh, no, it's not. Uh, so, um, you mean like in the console? It's not. So, uh, how it works under, uh, under the hood, we have... Um, so, there is graphical is ID that is available uh, on... Like, you can make it available on any GraphQL server that you create. Um, and then it has uh, some uh, extensions to this ID with analyze button and uh, additional things. Um, but in general, there is no, uh, like, it, it's just using GraphQL, uh, graphical here inside. <coughs> Under the hood, by the way, the engine is written in Haskell. Um, Yeah, we totally can connect to GraphQL without a poll. Um, with a poll, it's just more convenient because it's it's easier to use. It, it has lots of helpers and stuff like that. Um, uh, do we need Relay for ReactJS to connect to GraphQL? I personally prefer um, Apollo for uh, for connecting to uh, to GraphQL. Um, to be honest, I uh, haven't used much Relay, um, so we won't be using it through the bootcamp. We will be using Apollo Client for like all of like for React, Angular, Vue. <coughs> yeah. Um, So in terms of like under the hood, what I, I start to explain, it will uh, the engine is basically um, um, has like um, it's written in Haskell. It has the ability to like parse these queries and uh, convert them to <coughs> to SQL, and uh, it has like lots of things. So you can add remote schemas, uh, which is basically your own custom logic, so you can totally add different uh, additional servers or business logic or stuff like that. And I have uh, events, which I won't explain now, it's like for several side, we will talk, I will explain it on uh, uh, here, Twitch TV, Sora HQ, So, I will explain it here, on this Thursday at 11 a.m. So this will be the overview of the engine and more like in-depth uh, things that's not particularly related to, to our bootcamp. You're welcome, everyone. Okay, um, cool. Uh, more questions? Um, well, if not, a couple of minutes, and um, I want to wish you good luck with the homework. And uh, thanks. This is my Twitter, so yeah, we'll be um, actually like regarding streaming in general. Um, it's um, I will I stream usually at eleven a.m. PST on Mondays and Thursdays. So on Mondays is more just like a general uh, uh, like a general class. Uh, not the general class, like like more general stream. So I will be uh, like on Mondays. I usually just do uh, something out of like web, VR, AR, mobile, IoT, and uh, on Thursdays more like um, as a lecture type kind of thing, lecture workshop type of thing. So it will be like on a, on a weekly basis on uh, <coughs> Monday and Thursdays. Um, so feel free to just like, ping me there. If if you, um, I mean, just ping me on Twitch uh, on these streams. And regarding this class, so uh, you have homework 
So I uh, hope you um, will follow the exercises um, and, and do the homework. Um, if you want like to um, send me these exercises, so the best way will be just like tweet them at me with the link. If you don't feel uh, comfortable to like um, share it with everyone, you can just uh, send direct message on Twitter and uh, I will totally look into it uh, tomorrow. Probably uh, a little bit later tomorrow because uh, I mean it's 5 a.m. right now so <laughs> I will get some sleep and then uh, yeah the, totally uh, you can tweet at me you can send me a direct messages that's the whole point of uh, of this bootcamp um, it's more uh, you have homework it's more engaging I will check your homework if you'll uh, tweet at me and so submit this uh, you can submit pull requests uh, so yeah, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, everyone. Tomorrow it's uh, um, <coughs> it's a really um, really interesting day because we will cover like three major front end frameworks: Vue, Angular, and React. It will be a bit of a challenge, um, and uh, yeah, um, we'll see how it goes. Probably it will take more time tomorrow than it took today. Today is well was uh, how much like two hours tomorrow probably will be close to three hours uh, um, we will see how it goes um, and obviously you will have all this um, homework um, yeah thanks everyone and uh, see you tomorrow bye <laughs> uh, regarding the calf, uh, yeah, uh, I need to feel better. <laughs>